Hello, my name is Michael Hennessy. In this series of videos, Shea Phelan, Kieran Collins and I will visit farmers who are working with the Enable Conservation Tillage Project over the last five years. We will visit these farms throughout the year to see how they're getting on using their establishment system, but also to see how they're controlling grass weeds in these systems, of which some of the weeds are problematic on many of the farms. I'm here in Kilmac Thomas County, Waterford. I'm on my way out to visit Bill Shannon. Uh, he's coping with some grass weeds, uh, certainly sterile brome, but also black grass as well. So I'm going to pop in here this afternoon uh, to see how he's getting on with that. Bill Shanahan and my son James, we farm here in Kilmac Thomas County, Waterford, in the mid county Waterford between the Cumbria Mountains and the uh, sea, of course, and um, we've been here for generations. And the type of system that you're running now, is you, you move from a plow based system into a mintel type system? We did, well, I suppose, look, we're, we're mixed farmers. We did about eight years or so, we uh, more or less stopped plowing and uh, started using this machine here behind us, which is a deep loosener, but it's not a plough, really, yeah. And what was the reason that you, you changed, Bill, from that? Um, <clears throat> we were using a lot of organic fertiliser, as in compost and anaerobic digestate at that time, and we thought we, we were spreading it one day, and I said, God, wouldn't it be great if we just um, cultivate this into the top of the ground instead of ploughing it down seven or eight inches? and um, we thought it would be much better for the soil and our fields also with the plough were becoming quite uneven and we decided this might be lead to more more sustainable type of soil. You're seven or eight years in the system now, yeah. you're, you're still learning and feeling your way through it are you to, 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 to try and perfect it then? Ah we are, sure we're only newcomers and we're only uh, learning it. It has been there's been no major obstacle or, or downside to it. It is all, as far as I'm concerned, it has been a very positive way of doing it, yeah. Grass weeds, is there any grass weeds that are an issue on, on your system at the moment? Going back to years, we had some grass weeds, even with the plough, around the hedges, etc., and so on. Sterile brome can easily move out from the headland with this system, I think, more quickly if you, if you use continuous winter barley or even continuous winter wheat, if you're, you know, but at least with continuous winter wheat, you can use a chemical that would be effective against the sterile brome. With spring barley, you, sorry, with winter barley, you can't. Now, our rotation, we would have, our rotation does include spring oats and spring barley and uh, laterally oilseed rape. So if you're using spring crops, that takes away the, the spread of the spring brome, of the sterile brome. The other weed that you have here is black grass. I thought it was a kind of a, a different variety of scotch grass or something because it kind of spread similarly, you know, and it was getting worse and worse. And, um, and nobody was able to identify it until uh, Kieran Collins immediately knew what it was when he saw it. So we were, we were delighted to be, have an answer for it anyway. Uh, so since then, we've been working with uh, Tagash uh, in Oak Park to uh, look at the best way of um, dealing with the situation. Have you been successful in keeping it there in that particular area of your farm? You have to be very careful with the combine, yes. Um, we did notice in one field where we would start the combine where there was a little bit of an ingress in a different field uh, of black grass, but we're taking uh, strong steps to keep that under control, yeah. Okay. And how has that been going? Have you managed to decrease the numbers, do you think, over the years? So what we've done to, in that particular small bit of ground, we've, we're growing spring barley only, and we're using a high seeding rate to give a very competitive crop in the hope that we will decrease the population of the black grass. And that, that, that does seem to be bearing some fruit, yeah. Do you think, will you ever be rid of it? Worst case situation, we might put that field back into grass if we have to, but we want to try and, we want it to stay in uh, cropping if possible. Mm -hmm. 
So it's late July and I'm heading back down here to Bill Shannon's farm, who's farm here near Kilmac Thomas County Waterford, uh, just to see how he's getting on with his mintil system and trying to control some black grass uh, on a proportion of his farm. He was certainly making reasonably good progress in, in uh, reducing populations, but it'll be interesting to see how, uh, how it's all looking. On each farm, the ECT project selected a field with a high weed burden to monitor management practice. The ECT project staff used a grid methodology to count weeds each year before harvest. The results reflected how successful or not the weed control measures worked. On the map, squares coloured blue or green have a low weed population and squares coloured orange or red have a high weed population. How are you, Michael? Good. How are you keeping? Good. Good man. Right. Oh. Right. So, as we remember, we were starting out. You, you obviously knew that you had a problem of of, of black grass there for. Since we started on this, we've used the stale seedbed every year. Okay. And uh, sometimes with a cover crop. Put it up that in the spring, controlling it in the spring. Well, our our, our approach would be to um, harvest the crop, and then leave it for. I suppose six weeks or thereabouts anyway, and we would cultivate it in and uh, either for, uh, you know, the stale seed bed or to plant the cover crop. We would leave it then for the winter and give it a good shot of uh, Roundup in February, I suppose. Yeah. Did you adjust a bit of the, of the rates of barley? Did you adjust it up by 10 or 15 percent, did you? Well, initially we were using standard rates, which I, I suppose in old terms would have been, you know, 11 or 12 stone. Uh, so we uh, took the route then that we would plant the barley at in, again, in old terms, 14 stone an acre, so that there'd be a lot more competition and a lot less light getting to the black grass. So, as you can see, then, if you can track through it, you probably you would have noticed this from the cab anyway, an awful lot less black grass in 2020 after, after that. And it, your counting of them would would mm. clarify or confirm that, I suppose, yeah. And in 2021, something similar, actually less again. And it does appear to be getting better. So even in, uh, and, and we'll, we'll have to do the count still this year, but even in 2022, where you were trying your best to do everything in it, mm. some parts of the field are certainly better, there's none in some parts, but there's still a level there. Well, we know the one that we have is resistance, has resistance to all uh, normal grass weed killers used in cereal growing. So we're, we're very compromised in that respect. Really to make any impact on the populations of the black grass, we really would, at this stage, uh, you're confined to spring cropping, which would be a spring cropping with a good canopy on it that will hinder the development of the grass weeds the black grass weeds as they're growing in the spring. You don't want to have an open crop, that's the last word that you could last thing. In the, in the validation area, you've been running it now for five years and obviously you've been dealing with this problem for a good number of years, but what are the three or four things that you've learned out of the validation area over that period of time? There's no easy answer to that one, Michael, because we can. Uh, uh, it appears that we're improving the situation, but whether we'll ever get to a situation where we're 100% clear of black grass is the big question. A lot of work goes into it and you have to, your your rotation is curtailed and your freedom to do things and you have to put in a lot of extra work into cleaning off combines and balers and stuff etc like that. So you know black grass or any weed like it is a big hindrance to farmers. The crop rotation are, are, are made more difficult by having something like this where you are trying to use a particular crop to control it rather than having a broader rotation where you can't row control it. Did you bring many of those lessons out to your wider farm? We would take great care to try and stop the spread of the black grass seeds by cleaning out the combine and everything like that and we're very vigilant where we would bring the combine next to make sure that there's not going to be any transfer of seeds if possible at all. And have you been successful in that? We did notice in one field, Michael, where we had a few black grass there and um, we tried to rogue those and uh, roguing black grass is much more difficult than it sounds to do it 
let's say, to a high standard, but also the amount of work that goes into it. It's, it's not all that easy. If you had a neighbour of yours who's worried maybe about black grass coming in onto her farm, what would be the three or four things that you would try and get across to that farmer to make sure was put in place to, to make sure that didn't happen? I suppose the standard advice is biosecurity with travelling combines and balers. All right? Now, assuming that you do as much as you can in that respect, you need to keep uh, be very vigilant about watching grass weeds. And if there's one that you're not too sure of, get it properly diagnosed and take proper precautions after that, as in, you know, adopt or not, as the case be, might be a proper rotation, or else put it back into grass, you know. But it's, uh, it, black grass is one that's very difficult to control. And in, in terms of the, um black grass on your farm in total, do you think you might have to change in certain areas to, if you have black grass, to do something very different? It would appear, I think, that, you know, if you have black grass, receding it back into grass is probably the best option in the long run. That in a cereal rotation or any arable rotation, it's not possible to get 100% control and uh, reduce it to such a level that you're eventually going to get rid of it altogether. Possibly the grass would be the best option, I would think, in the long term. Are you considering some of that? We are in that particularly bad field, yeah. Huge thanks to all the farmers who shared their experiences along the last five years. If you want more information on all of the farmers, please go to the Chagas website, chagas.ie, and search for the ECT project.